Bitcoin is showing some massive weakness on the short term and weekly charts. In today's video, we're going to be doing a complete technical and structural analysis discussing the next move for Bitcoin, what the bulls need to do to reclaim control and how the charts are currently looking. Let's go ahead and dive into the video. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. In today's video, we're going to be discussing Bitcoin from a short term and a high time frame perspective, going over a variety of different charts and technical indicators, of course, discussing the next move for Bitcoin, what the charts are currently looking like on the short term and the weekly, and exactly what the bulls need to do to fully reclaim control. Before we get into it, smash that like button, hit the comment button and subscribe to the channel. We post daily videos for Bitcoin focusing on the facts the data, the technical and structural information, and the relevant economic events. No hype, no BS, no emotion, pure raw TA. If that is the kind of content you're interested in, join us on Telegram. It is the third link down below. You get access to charts, updates, videos, educational posts, news events, everything you need to stay in the loop of cryptocurrency with Bitcoin and of course the relevant economic data. If you are interested in our trading channel, you can join our VIP group. We post trading signals, as you can see over here, with exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses, uh, trade justification, and charts to go along with those. If you're interested in joining that, you'll also get access to our general chat, our trading chart and education chat. You can see our members in here trading basically all day, every day. Our trade setup chat, so additional trades for members to take, news, educational videos, our videos and of course our help chat if you're interested in joining all of that you can go ahead and contact me in the pin comment in the free channel to go ahead and get access to the vip let's go ahead guys and dive into the video starting on of course the market data how are we currently looking liquidations for the 24 hour period is sitting at 64 million up 5.13 percent so a little bit of a surge upwards in the last 24 hours as bitcoin actually did crash toward the downside and again if you did watch yesterday's video we were discussing the likelihood of a correction in yesterday's video and we did see um in fact that correction play out from that retest of 27,200. Uh, remember we said the retest of 27,200 was a retest of that weekly uh, bull market support band as per this chart over here. Since then, we saw a full-blown correction all the way back down exactly to our target of 26,300. We'll discuss more in detail today what the next move is. Moving back to the data, we can see 24-hour volume is down 1.77%, so a negligible amount, sitting at 53 billion in total. As per September, with about eight to nine days left in the month, we are currently sitting at 2.56% in the green. It's going to be very interesting to see how September closes, considering historically September is quite a red month. And we're not talking about percentage drawdown. It's actually not a very bearish month, but if we look at the overall amount of red months versus green months, there's a 76% chance September was going to be red. If we then add up all the negative months and all the positive months and divide that by 13, it gives us a number of negative 5.6%. That tells us the average pullback for September is negative 5.46. If we saw a negative 5.46 pullback from the open price, that would bring us down to around 24,450. Again, not saying that's going to happen, but it'll be very interesting to see how the month closes considering that objective data. Moving over to liquidations, we can see with the 60 million in liquidations, the vast, vast majority of those actually came from those longs. And again, that was quite obvious as the price did correct in the last 24 hours. Let's go ahead, guys, and jump over to the DXY. As you can see, the DXY is continuing upwards over here, reaching as high it looks like around 105.7. It reached 105.7 temporarily before short-term rejecting. However, we are still in this overall uptrend, right? This overall uptrend, this rising channel formation. If we do break toward the downside, we will need to be losing this uptrending support. A loss of the uptrending support will result in a correction towards this lower area of support of around 103. Again, we will either determine a new uptrend or a complete rejection from there. If we do see a breakdown of the DXY, that could be be potentially bullish for the asset market. However, 
if the DXY does continue upwards, we could see the markets correct more aggressively. Again, for the DXY to continue upwards, we do need to invalidate this overall structure of which we are moving within, which is this rising channel structure. To do so, we do really need to start pushing above around 107. Moving over to the stock market, we can see the stock market is correcting as expected. As you know, if you've been following the channel, we said ever since this point over here, we are looking for corrections for the S&P. In fact, our target has been this, this little red box over here, this area of support around 4,300. Currently, we have seen a pretty decent move toward the downside for that, a little bit shy of that, but we are still expecting over the next few days, the S&P 500 to come down to retest this area of demand. Moving over to the Dow Jones, the Dow Jones is looking actually considerably weak over here, breaking below its overall uptrending support line. Again, this is actually relatively bearish, confirming we are now in this overall downtrend. How low will the downtrend go? We do have a huge, huge chunk of support around about this $3, uh, $34,000 to $3,600 uh, 3, level. But again, keep your eye on that in the weeks to come. Let's go ahead, guys, and jump into Bitcoin. I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss the two exchanges we use on this channel, BitGet and BingX. So which exchange should you sign up to? If you look to the right hand side of the screen, you're gonna see the list of differences in relation to KYC requirements and the countries these exchanges offer services to. The first link down below being the BitGet link and the second link down below being the BingX link. No matter which link you sign up to, you're going to get up to 15% discounts on your trading fees, up to 5,000 US dollars in trading rewards, and of course, you'll get access to every single MegaWow exclusive bonus campaign we run on these exchanges. Alongside that, BitGet and BingX are incredibly similar. They are both ranked top 10 in terms of trading volume. They both have extensive liquidity pools and market pairs offering up to 125x leverage. And most importantly, they both offer protection funds for the users to protect you against any third party hacks. So get started now and support the channel by clicking the links below. Thanks for listening. So there is a lot going on in Bitcoin's chart. And I guess in today's video, we're going to be discussing what the short term charts are suggesting, what the next likely move is, what the weekly and daily charts are suggesting, and of course, exactly what the bulls need to do to fully reclaim control. So let's go ahead and start on that final point. And to do that, we need to talk about this chart. This, of course, is our daily chart. In the last couple days, we have seen Bitcoin bounce quite aggressively from this lower range of major support. This is, of course, our 400 day long horizontal level of support, which actually originally marked the shift in strength from a daily into a weekly uptrend. We can see back over here, we had this upper level of resistance back all the way back in August, 2022. We retested that level in February, 2023. And when we finally broke above that level at 24.5, uh, we actually, 25.2, uh, sorry, we actually officially entered this weekly bullish trend. That was the trigger point for this daily reversal to develop into this overall weekly bullish trend. We continued upwards quite aggressively for quite some time, pushing into the 30,000 range where we rejected, we retested and continued upwards to 32. And now we are coming back down to retest that once more. 25.2 was retested and we did bounce from 25.2 again. These levels of massive, massive importance. And we're talking about massive importance in terms of macro trends, right? If we look at 25.2 and we say, well, a loss of 25.2 to 24.4 uh, would result in a shift from a weekly bearish into a macro bearish trend. Therefore, we generally are going to see a lot of indecision, a lot of volatility, a lot of large wicks, a lot of sporadic price action at these levels, just as we saw the same thing here. This level over here was the shifting point between a weekly bullish trend to a macro bullish trend. A break of 32K would have been macro bullish. And we saw the same thing. We saw indecision, we saw volatility, we saw sideways price action, we saw large wicks, a lot of scam moves, exactly the same thing occurred in this range as we are seeing now in this range. So it was perfectly, perfectly normal. However, it is also very important to remain objective, eliminate bias, and 
really focus on the fact that the market doesn't care what you want. It's going to do what the market does. You have to remain objective. So we're looking at this chart objectively. We can say we have an overall downtrend over here. And this overall downtrend represented by this black line actually represents the weekly bearish trajectory that Bitcoin has been traveling within ever since mid-July 2023. This downtrending trend line not only represents the trajectory of price action, it also reflects a level of resistance. It's a trigger point for when if the price breaks above, we will show relative strength in regards to this entire cluster of price action, and that could shift the trend direction upward. Until then, we are underneath this level, we have relative weekly weakness. And this relative weekly weakness is present across multiple time frames, not just the daily chart. It is present all over the weekly and even the monthly chart. And we'll get into that in just a moment. So first and foremost, for the bulls to really take control again, the number one step, the first step they need to accomplish is getting that price out of the weekly bearish trend. They need to break the price above this downward diagonal, uh, di downtrending diagonal resistance. Okay, let's move on from there, guys. If we're taking a look at our indicators over here, and we take a look at the probability of a breakout over here, like we said in yesterday's video, we saw momentum had already shifted positive. It broke out of that respective downtrend. We did not have our CVD shift in volume, right? If we take a look at our highs on our CVD, so this high point corresponding to the high points on the RSI and corresponding to the retest points of this trend line, we can see the CVD was underneath these points. Again, suggesting we didn't really have the strength. We didn't have the buying strength to suggest a breakout. So we had momentum massively front running a breakout with a price action underneath the trend line. And we didn't have the CVD in the place we needed to, to suggest overall strength. And therefore what we had a potential to do was a fail, we had the potential to fail to break out and we have momentum exhausting prior to the price breaking out, which could actually drive the price action back down. This is an actual example of exhaustion before a breakout. Okay, moving on from there, if we take a look at the 50 EMA, we've seen scenarios like this before, where we have this massive match, massive correction. Okay, massive correction over here. We have volatility increase. Again, if we take a look at the 50 EMA, the distance between the 50 EMA, which is a red line, and of course, the price action itself uh, reflects volatility. So if we have a larger gap between the red line, which is a 50 MA, and the price action, it reflects larger volatility. If the gap is closing, it reflects reduction in volatility. If the gap is above, again, it, sh it re uh, reflects a shift in overall strength. So when we have this gap closing according to the volatility over here, we see compression, right? And what we saw prior was a break above and then a correction back low. We've seen this numerous, numerous times in the past. We're likely to see it again. Again, we see volatility drop. We see volatility increase. We see volatility drop. We see volatility increase. We see volatility compress. We see the price action shift strength, but the technicals that support a shift in strength are not there, meaning the volume requirements are not there. The momentum is not there. There's nothing really supporting this breakout. It ends up being a false break and we see a correction. How deep that correction can go is dependent on the short term. However, if you did listen to our video yesterday, you would have noted that would have been a false break, which it actually ended up being. If we take a look at the higher time frame, guys, for us to say the bearish trend is going to continue, we do need to lose that 22.5 to 24.4k level, okay? If you're noting any two significant points on the charts, the two most significant points are the 25.2 to 24.4, and the downward diagonal trend line, right? We lose this level, we continue down, we lose this low, we lose this entire cluster of price action, we lose a 400 day long support level, okay? That would deviate the price low into a macro bearish trend. Number two, if we break above that downward diagonal trend line, we break out of the current downtrend, we could see something similar to that. If we do break the 25.2 to 24.4K level, the next low support is sitting quite low. It is sitting around 22.2 and it is sitting around 20,000. Again, these are potential lows the price loses that 24.4K support. Let's go over to the weekly chart and then we'll talk about the current short-term price action. So moving over to the weekly chart, as you can see guys, I talked about in yesterday's video, we don't really have the strength right now. We actually are showing weakness. What we've seen is a downtrend, right? We sort of price break under the bull market support band, okay? The upper band of the Gorsley channel, 
and the 50MA. We saw a breakdown at this point, so we've actually come up, we've bounced from that major area of support, we've come up and retested the 50, we've retested the bull market support band, and we have currently actually rejected from those levels. Again, this candle will close in three days if the price is unable to break as a minimum above 27,200 uh, 27, in three days, this will reflect a rejection from that bull market support band, which could likely continue a downtrend. Furthermore, if we fail to get above the Gaussian channel upper band, we will remain in a downtrend, okay? This is probably the most significant level on the chart, as it not only reflects this local high point over here, where we entered this basically as overextension, right? Also, when we lost it, we, we corrected aggressively to the downside. So we'll show you one more time. Look at this horizontal line at around 28.4, which matches that Gaussian channel. We broke above. We saw a massive surge in volatility, okay? We broke below. We saw a massive reaction on the negative. So again, this level is going to be acting as a shift in the direction, a trigger for a shift in direction, meaning while we remain below this level, the weekly weakness is still prevalent. And again, while that weekly weakness remains, the price could correct much, much lower. Looking over at momentum, again, we're not seeing anything too snazzy over here. Our money index is flowing upwards. However, momentum is still very much negative. Again, if the price does correct further, that could very much flip negative and continue lower. Again, nothing on the weekly chart is suggesting overall strength by now. Every indicator on the weekly is suggesting we are in a downtrend. The downtrend was the losing strength temporarily, but it never lost strength to the point at which the downtrend turned into a uptrend. The downtrend is still there. The weakness is still there. The weakness was fading, but it looks like the weakness could potentially be coming back. So until we really flip over these levels on the on the technical chart, and until we really flip over these levels on the structural chart, it is very likely this weakness could develop further and continue to price action down. Moving over to the short-term chart, we saw a rising channel formation develop. Again, quite a messy rising channel formation, but nevertheless, a rising channel formation. Rejecting from this level of liquidity right over here, breaking toward the downside, losing this local high at 26.8k, actually breaking back into our range. So now, once more, again, we are back within this crazy month-long horizontal range before Bitcoin determines what it wants to do next. So looking at the current price action, guys, like we said in our video the other day, when we enter ranges, the direction of entry into the range is the direction the price will continue until it reaches support. All right, when something moves in one direction, it's likely to continue in that direction until it reaches an area of demand or supply. So in this instance, we broke upwards, we rejected, we initiated this downtrend, we broke into the channel, it is very likely we continue this downtrend until two things happen. Number one, we reach an area of supply at 26.3, which we have, or number two, if we lose that level, we continue through to our lower base of support. Again, now is not the time to be entering late shorts. Guys, again, do not wait for the price action to move in your direction before you start entering your positions. You have to be front running moves to some degree, taking calculated risks. If we break down to the smaller time frame, the next immediate move for Bitcoin is very likely we come down and retest this base of support at around 26.2 uh, to 26.3k. That is what I would assume to be the immediate move. However, if we break it down to a 10, 15 minute chart, we can see now already how the bulls are fighting to bring the price back under control. However, they have not really managed to do that yet. You can see how the volatility started to increase. It is starting to compress. This is reflective of bearish exhaustion, right? Again, if we do flip this 50 MA, if we do see momentum flip positive, if we do see the CVD start rising, we could see the price see a small little bump back upwards to retest this area at around about 27k. However, I think it's unlikely. I think the most likely scenario is a continuation downward. If we zoom back to the four hour chart, guys, while we are within this horizontal structure, we are neutral. Do not forget that. While we are in this horizontal structure, we are neutral. For the bears to fully take control on the high time frame again, we need to lose that 25.2k level, which you can see is a major, major area support. If we lose the midline of this channel, 
that is going to be the confirmation of a continuation towards the baseline of this channel. A break into the channel was a confirmation of a retest of the midline. The midline has been retested. A break of the midline is a confirmation of a retest of the lower line. Again, watching for these ranges, watching for these levels. If we go over to an hourly chart and take a look, we can see momentum has of course reached its bottom. So we have seen negative momentum. Okay, we're below, we're under, we're in this negative momentum. We've seen strong negative shifting to weakening negative. So we do have an attempt over here for bulls to start taking the price action back in control. We are seeing this bearish, uh, bearish exhaustion occur. However, it is not quite yet enough strength to really flip that price action. So until we see that strength come into the market, it is very unlikely the price action is actually going to flip back upwards. I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up there, guys. I think if we want to go finish on a few important notes. Notes number one, look at the higher time frame. Understand the high time frame trajectory is very relevant. It's very important. Okay. If you understand this, you'll be able to apply to the short term a lot more effectively. When we break above this trend line, that is when we exit the weekly bearish trend. When we lose the support line, that is when we enter a macro bearish trend. Until then, we are in a overall downtrend, okay? Looking at the weekly chart, all the technical levels on the weekly chart are suggestive of weakness as of right now. When we see the bulls retake control, or if we want to see the bulls retake control, 28.4 is really going to be that most important level we need to break above, okay? As for the short term, Expect this trend to possibly come down lower to around 26.3. However, watch out for a short-term bounce to around 26.8 to 27. If momentum starts to come back in, as we have seen a sharp drop, we've seen a lot of money liquidated. Now we are seeing smaller body candles, smaller wicks. We're seeing some bearish exhaustion. We get a flood of volume, if we get a surge of volume, we could see a short-term bullish reaction in the market. However, it is very unlikely this bullish reaction should be taken um, you know, to heart, take off a grain of salt until we start breaking above 27.2. Okay, thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Have a great weekend. See you later.